So let's actually execute this algorithm on an instance of the knapsack problem. Okay, so I've written our problem definition right here. So that's, that's the problem instance. I've written our DP recurrence here that relates the solutions of subproblems to the solutions of even smaller subproblems, okay, that we'll use to guide the algorithm as we go forward. And I've initialized our DP table here uh, just next to my head. Okay, so notice that this is capturing, so this, this table is F, right? So let's, let's be, let's be uh, clear about what we're doing here. So the algorithm in, initializes an array of zeros. The zeros that matter are the first column and the first row. And what these zeros represent is that either if we have access to no items, in other words, the first row, or we have access to zero capacity, that is the first column, then the value of, the, of an optimal subset is zero because the optimal subset is just the empty set, right? There's no way we can fit items in if we don't have items or if we have a zero capacity, okay? So that's, that's the notion of what we're looking at right here. So then what we do is we start working our way through the rows and columns of the table. And so, so notice that, uh, you know, the, the nesting of the for loop uh, you know, doesn't doesn't matter too much, but we can we can just follow the pseudocode we have right here. And the way the pseudocode works is the outer loop is the I loop, right? Is the item loop, and then the inner loop is the weight. So what that means is that we begin. Let me get that lined up right. Is that we begin here and work our way across the first row. So what does it mean to work our way across the first row? Well, let's let's sit here in this box. And, and solve this subproblem. Okay, so we're gonna ask the question, uh, what is the optimal subset using items, using only item one, right? So the optimal subset of the set containing only one uh, that fits in the capacity uh, of one. Okay, so what, what are our ones? Well, this, this is the I, so that the rows are indexed by I, the columns are indexed by J. So, uh, we're saying what is the optimal the optimal subset using item one, right? So it's a trivial subset which just could have either nothing or only the item one in it using item one that fits in capacity one. Well, what, what could this be? Well, there's only one possible subset for using item one and that's just one, right? And uh, the first thing we have to do is check if one could even fit in a capacity of one, right? The first, the first step in the algorithm is always, does this item fit? And so let's look over at our problem instance to see if it fits in a capacity of one. And we've got item one here, which has a weight of seven. So item one won't even fit in a capacity of one. So what does that mean? Well, it means we just copy down the thing that's directly above us, right? We, in, into this, this red boxed cell in the table, we just copy the thing above us. We, we subtract one from I, from the index I, and copy it down. So we just take this and copy it down, and we, we copy in zero, okay? So this is, this, is, uh, this is iteration one. Iteration two is the same, okay? Nothing surprising about iteration two, right? In iteration two, we copy down the zero. Why? Because item I doesn't fit. And in fact, that's going to be true all the way up until we get to a capacity of seven, right? Because that's the weight of, of item, item one. So we can fill in zeros all the way in this row, all the way till we get to seven. And then what happens when we get to, uh, to, to seven? Well, we have to now we have to ask a more, a more nuanced question. So now we have to say, look, this condition fails. So now we're living in this world. So what does it mean to be living in this world? Well, it means we need to compare two numbers. So it means we need to compare, and I'm gonna clear some space here so that we have room for, room for some, more, some more arrows here. So we need to compare two numbers. We need to compare this, right? The, the optimal value of a subset uh, that does not contain item one with the value of item one plus the value of an optimal subset that doesn't contain one and doesn't have one's and doesn't have or has capacity reduced by one's weight. Okay, so let me draw two arrows to say what these two things are referencing. Right, so the the, the number in this box is either that or it's that plus the value of item one. 
right, plus 42. Okay, which number is bigger? Well, 40, 42, right? I, I'm comparing 0 with 42 now, and 42 is clearly bigger. Okay, so what did we do? We said, well, to understand the, the value of an optimal subset, when I can only use item 1, uh, and the capacity is 7, I have to understand two things. One, I have to understand what would happen if one were in the optimal subset, and then I removed it and its capacity. Well, that would take me that would take me to this zero over here. And then I also have to understand what would happen if one weren't in the capacity. And then I said, you're not allowed to use it. Well, that would take me to this zero here. Okay. And so because the zero on the far left plus the value of i or of one is 42, and that's greater than 0, which is the number directly above us, then we know that the optimal subset here is just 1. Okay. So this is, this is an extremely long-winded way of saying, if I only have 1 and it fits, then add it. Okay. And so, so this is the in intuition for why the value here is 42, but the algorithmic reason involves tracing these two red arrows that I've drawn on the, on the plot. Okay, and it's not hard to see that uh, forever uh, and, and above, uh, it's going to be the answer is going to be 42, right? If I just fill out the rest of the table, I'll fill it with 42s. And, and s algorithmically, it's really important to understand that those 42s did not come from the first 42 that I wrote. Those 42s come from a comparison just like the one with the red arrows. Uh, so let me see if I can actually, this, is, this would be delightful. Uh, let me see if I can. If I can just select those, sure I can. Right, so what I'm doing when I, when I calculate each one of these 42s is this. Okay, so what, is, what does this mean? Well, for each of the 42s, I am stepping to the left seven columns and then moving one up. Why seven? Because that's the, that's the weight of item one. Right? Item 1 has a weight of 7, so I'm stepping to the left 7 columns and then 1 up, which is simulating, basically simulating what would happen if 1 were part of the, the optimal subset, um, and then I removed it in its capacity. So I compare that number plus the value of, of item 1 with the number directly above me, which is simulating what would happen if 1 weren't the optimal, it weren't part of the optimal subset. Um, if it's not part of the optimal subset, then I just inherit the value directly above me. Okay, so now let's go to the next. Let's go to the next row. So let's let's index this thing forward, and uh, and and start asking. Okay, what if now we have access to item two? All right. So what do we do in this box here? Well, this box is saying, what if I have access to two to one and two? So I can use either or both, and my capacity is one. Well, you know. Let's see if two fits, right? The first question we always ask is, does the item even fit, right? And here it doesn't, right? So what do we do? We just copy down the number that's directly above us. So we just we just copy that number down uh, as, as stated by our recurrence, uh, our DP recurrence up there, and we just put a zero in there. And that's gonna be true uh, when, when the capacity is one or when the capacity is two. When the capacity is three, things get a little bit more interesting, right? So when the capacity is three, now we're trying to fill in this box. We, one of the comparisons we always make is the, the number directly above us. So we always look here. But then we also step to the left by the weight right, of, of item 2, which is 3, and then step one, one row up, right? and then add in the, 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 the value of 2. So we step back here, and we say uh, it, it, the, the optimal value that belongs in this red box could either be 3 to the left, 1 up, plus the value of 2, which is 12. So plus 12. Or it could just be the value above me, right? Which is better? Well, the value 3 to the left plus 12, right? So this is, this is then 12. <clears throat> okay, and so to do the next one, I do the same thing. Right? No difference. Okay, so to do the next one, I just index that forward and do exactly the same thing. So I leave the 12 here, and I say, okay, what's what's bigger? 3 to the left and up, uh, plus 12, or directly above me? Well, clearly 3 to the left and up, plus 12. And so then I just write in 12, and I do this again. And I keep doing this, right? I'll do it here, 
and get 12. Uh, I'll do it here and get 12. Right? And then I have to ask the same question here. So let me erase that 12. I haven't answered the question here yet. Let me fill in the 12s just so that I've got the record. And now once I'm here, now something interesting happens. So now I say either the optimal subset contains two, in which case the value of that optimal subset would be the value of, tw of two plus whatever value is optimal three to the left and up, which is zero, right? So it'd be 12. Or the optimal value of the subset is whatever is optimal for the case when two isn't allowed, but I have the same capacity, which is just the number straight above. And in this case, that comes out to 42. Okay, so here's the first interesting thing that's happened in our algorithm. Okay, the first time our algorithm hasn't done something that's somewhat trivial. Right, so here our algorithm says, our algorithm has intelligently discovered that when the capacity is seven, it's better to put in item one than it is to put in item two. Right? You could have told me that by looking at the, at the definition of the problem, but now our algorithm did that. Right? Now we have an algorithm that just by the mechanics of it as it's working through, it actually does that automatically. Okay? And we'll get the same exact answer for the next two columns. Okay, so the so let's index this forward. Same thing happens here. Same thing happens here. Okay, uh, and then let's let's index forward one more, and think about what happens there. So I'm going to erase my 42 in the box, copy down the 42s that we put in here, and now what fill what fills in the box here? Well, now the question is if the capacity is 10. Either what we can do, either the best thing to do is to have two be a part of the subset, in which case the value is, we can find the value by going three columns left and up and then adding 12, or we can, or we can not let two be a part of the subset and we can just find the value by looking directly up. And so now we're comparing 42 plus 12, right? This, this 42 plus 12, with just this 40 here. In fact, let me do this. This 42 plus 12 with this 42. And what's optimal? It's clearly 42, uh, 42 plus 12, right? So, so now we're up to 54 is the value of our optimal subset. All right, so I'm gonna continue with this. I will continue the video all the way through the algorithm. So I'm not gonna stop till I get to the end. Um, but hopefully now you're starting to catch the idea. That five is actually quite hard to read. Hopefully by now you're starting to catch the idea. You're starting to understand what's kind of what's going on with this algorithm and why, why it's working. Um, if you completely get it, feel free to skip to the end of the video. Um, if you would like more help, keep watching. Right? I'll, I'll, I'll finish out the entire, I'll finish out the entire uh, algorithm. So let's index forward now to the next row. So the next row now is the row where we say, okay, now what happens if we include item three? So just so we have it in our mind, item three has a value of uh, 40, right? And, a, and a, a weight of four, right? So it's, it's, uh, it's up here. So uh, the first one as always is gonna be simple, right? And, and we don't have to go into the, the, the great depth that we did before, but the, with the first one, what are we gonna say? Well, the first one we're gonna compare first does item three even fit by itself? And the answer is no, right? The, 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 the weight of item three is four. So in this, in this box, it can't fit. So we just, we just pull down that number, right? As simple as that, that number is zero. So what this is saying, by the way, like if we're, if we're gonna be very detailed about kind of what the algorithm is thinking, if you like that kind of anthropomorphism, the algorithm has just identified that the optimal subset for the problem where we're allowed to have one, two, and three, but the capacity is only one, is the same as the optimal subset when we're allowed to have only one and two, but the capacity is one, okay? So that's what we've just identified, right? And it happens that we already figured that number out and it's zero, so we, we just copy it in and, and we're good to go. All right, what do we do next? Well, the next is the same, clearly, right? Three doesn't fit in two either. Three also doesn't fit in a capacity of three. But once we're here, notice that the recurrence says, don't just copy in zero, right? Just because three doesn't fit doesn't mean nothing can fit. In fact, if three can't fit, 
All we have to do is say, well, let's pretend we didn't have three. Let's look at this number and copy it in, right? So, so you know, we do this and sure enough, now we have a value of 12 here. So uh, having a value of 12 there means that if we have a capacity of three and we're allowed to use any of items one, two, and three, then the best thing we can do gets us a value of 12. This chart doesn't immediately tell us what gets us a value of 12, but it tells us that the best we can do is a value of 12. And there are clever ways of processing the chart that would actually tell you, you know, what is this subset, and, and you would find the subset is just containing, the one just containing item two. All right, what's next? Well, next is when things get interesting again. So here we've got, we're asking what is the, what, what, what is the optimal value of a subset where I can use one, two, and three, but my capacity is four. And so now the capacity is four, which is large enough for three to fit. Okay, so since three can fit, now we have to, we have to make a comparison, right? Now we live in this world. And so now what do we do? We say, well, it could be just this, or it could be four, row, four columns to the left and then one up plus the value of three. Right, so or it could be that plus, what's the value of three? The value of three is 40, that plus 40. Well, clearly 40 plus zero is greater than 12. So we put in 40 here and, and we see that's going to continue for at least two more, two more rows. So let me just do what I've been doing and I'll index that forward. So it's gonna be true here as well. It's going to be true here as well, right? Those, those questions all look exactly identical to each other. So that's a 40, that's a 40. So now what this is saying is that if the capacity is six and our optimal, and we're allowed to use one, two, and three, and any of one, two, and three, then the best we can do is to, is to get a capacity, or is to get a value of 40. Okay, that's what this is telling us. So now let's index this forward one more time and things again get interesting. So if I index this forward one more time, what I'll do is I'll index it and then I'll erase the 40 in the box because, uh, oh, that's very interesting. Grabbed a zero and dragged that over too. So I'll erase the 40 in the box because now things are gonna be different. So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna say, well, it could be that if my capacity is seven, the optimal thing uh, does not contain a three and in which case it's the same and it gets the same value as the thing just above us where we're not allowed to have three in the first place but our capacity is seven and that value is 42. Or it could be that we are that we do have three existing in the optimal subset in which case uh, in which case the best we can do is 12, you know four columns to the left plus 40 uh, uh, or yeah 12 so 12 is this number here, four columns to the left and one up um, plus 40. And so that turns out that's a little bit better. That's, that gets us up to 52. And so that's the number we, we copy in, right? The best thing to do is to include three in our optimal subset here, um, and then have the, the rest of the space be filled up by whatever, whatever this does. And it happens that what that's doing is it's putting in item two. So now here for this subproblem, the optimal thing to do is to take items two and three and to leave one behind. So now let's index this forward. We'll just continue this game. So we index this forward and notice that nothing has changed here. We still have uh, 42 above us and 12 to the left. This is the same, 42 is above us and 12 is to the left. And then this one is different. So once I get here, I'll erase my 52 and I'll copy my 40. Oh, sorry, my I'll copy the 52 into all of these. And now something is slightly different. So now I'm asking what's better, 42 or 54, and now 54 is better. And so what's the interpretation here? The interpretation is that it's better, that if I can, if I have a full capacity of 10 and I have access to one, two, and three, it's slightly better to take items one and two than it is to take items two and three, okay? But if I had less capacity, then it was actually better to take two and three because they fit in a slightly smaller capacity than than, than one, right? One is large enough that it takes up a lot of room. In any case, the optimal here is just 54 because 54 is larger than, you know, 12, 
12 plus 40. And so I'm just I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, that was ugly. I'm going to do the same thing here that I did above, where I'll leave that circled, and I'll circle this. Okay. So we're comparing 12 plus 40 to 54, and 54 is better, so that's what we adopt. All right, let's continue. So <clears throat> we'll index our last index down by one more right here. Uh, you know, the logic, uh, the logic is quite repetitive. So we've got a zero. It's, it's clear, I hope, that we have a zero here and a zero here because four, the item four does not fit in that capacity. So we just copy down the zero from above. Again, here, item four does not fit. So we just copy down that number. Right, so this just becomes a 12. Here again, item 4 does not fit, so we just copy down the 40. Just, just point at the 40. And so now, on, on column 5, item 4 does fit. So now we have an interesting question to ask. Now we get to ask, does, is it better to include item 4 or to not include item 4? Right, so either we grab this number, we grab the 40, or we go to the left, you know, five spaces, the weight of item 4, and add 25, add the value of item 4. So we go to here and add 25. So what's bigger, 25 or 40? Clearly 40, right? So 40 is the, is the optimal value of a subset here. So again, let's index this forward. And notice nothing has changed here, right? We're still comparing, we're still comparing, uh, yeah, we're still comparing um, 40 with 25. So we copy in the 40. Here now we're comparing 52 with 25. So we copy in the 52. And then something changes potentially here. So now let me, let me write in the 40s. So these are 40s. This is 52, and let me delete this 40. We know it's not going to be 40. It has to be at least 52, because that's the number that's just above us. But now we can ask, OK, what's, what's bigger, 12 plus 25 or 52? Right? Those are the two numbers we're comparing. Uh, and I hope it's clear that 52 is larger than 12 plus 25. Right? 12 plus 25 is only 37, so that can't possibly, that's not better than 52. So here again. We, we copy in a 52, right? So now let's index this forward, per usual. So we index it forward, and now the question changes. So what, what do we see now? Well, so let me, let me make sure the 52 is written here. So now what do we have? Well, we're, we're comparing 40 plus 25 with 52, and so now 52 isn't the answer anymore. So now 40 plus 25, uh, is the larger, right? And that's, that has a value of 65, okay? And maybe 65 sounds familiar to you. Turns out 65 is the value of an optimal subset for the overall problem. Okay, so let's, let's keep our, our things copied. 65 goes there. Very interesting. All right, 65 there. And so now what, what are we doing? We're comparing 40 plus 25 with 54. I'll do my same blue circle-y thing again, just to be clear about this. Okay, so we're comparing 40 plus 25 with 54. 40 plus 25 is obviously larger, so the optimal value of a subset here is 65. And, and this is the correct answer. And we're done. And according... According to our algorithm, remember the last thing we do is once we've finished all of these for loops and filled out the whole table, we return the value, we return the, the, the lower right thing in the table, in the DP table. And so we're done. The optimal value of a subset for this instance of a problem is 65.